Uh, as you can see, this is a, a big joint effort to, to try to address one very important challenge in Brazil. And this presentation is a small piece of a big project. So I would like to, to start with uh, a small contextualization of our uh, larger goal of the project. Uh, bringing some data into the, the presentation, as you can see, this is a PISA result for 2018, and Brazil is So it's not that good. I, I know that PISA reflects math abilities in reading. It's not about writing because we are, here we are analyzing writing, but it somehow gives a sense of what, the, what is the situation in Brazil. And then we also have a few data about what happened during the, the COVID pandemic. So as you can see, uh, we have this, this uh, example showing that the, the student's ability in terms of mathematics and literacy, like written skills in Portuguese, it decreased a lot. So the, the learning gap that we face because of pandemic uh, increased the differences between the student ability before and after that. And to deal with this problem, the Brazilian government created this legislation that is about remote learning, but also learning recovery. And in this bigger legislation, this bigger project, that they are trying to, to deal with the problem in terms of reading math, we are working with writing skills. And the big question of the project is how to improve writing skills of students without increasing the burden on teachers and considering the social inequities of Brazil. Because we have many differences between schools in different parts of Brazil. And specifically for this analysis, uh, we have uh, an LP structure that we, we are analyzing for the whole project. So we are analyzing these four different aspects. But this paper is about only the last one. So we are going to talk about cohesion uh, today, but we are also working with uh, formal writing, uh, thematic coherence, and rhetorical structure of these essays. And we are happy to collaborate with other people who, who would like to join this effort. So feel free to, to catch up after the presentation to discuss more about them. Going into the specifics of this research, we evaluated these two research questions. One is related to the prediction of the cohesion score. And the main novelty here is apply these measures to Portuguese. But we also evaluate the same approach for English. And we, we managed to, to show that uh, what we are doing generalized to another language. And the second uh, research question is about understanding what, what are the main features for this task. And with this, we, we want to, uh, providing this explainability, we want to improve and enhance the trust in our solution. Uh, so going into the methods, we are analyzing two data sets, one in Portuguese, and the second one is in English. Uh, all of these data sets, they have a score between zero to one, just focusing on cohesion. So they, they also have the scores for the other competencies, but here we are focused on the, only the cohesion score. And both of them are public data, although we have the data from the project. We, in this paper, we use public data because it's easier to reproduce the results. So you can easily get our codes and rerun these results and reach the same uh, final results. As you can see, uh, the Portuguese data has uh, 4,500 texts, while the English data has a little bit more than 7,000. And the classes are not well distributed. As you can see, there is a predominance of texts uh, in Portuguese in the middle. Uh, in the English version of the data set, the, the distribution is slightly better because it covers like 
the the lower scar here only the 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 big the biggest scars are like with a, a small amount of data but in the portuguese it's harder to predict because we have like this distribution that is very different for each category and we, we evaluated two approaches the first approach it it was a feature based approach we decided to go for this one because the literature shows that several of these cometrics and Lewick features, they can be a good predictors of uh, cohesion at the end. So many papers in the, the literature just use these measures to correlate the, the measure with the cohesion score of the essay. In this case, we are not using a single, single feature, we are combining several of them. And at the end, we had slightly less than 200 features for Portuguese and 208 for English because the, the linguistic resources that we have for different languages are different. Of course, we have more resources for English because the community is, is bigger. Uh, but we have a, an, an effort in Brazil to increase these linguistics features because it's very important for our project as well. So in the first uh, approach that we, we used, we used all of these features and we applied to a regressor. Actually, we applied to several regressors to compare the results. And we also used BERT, which is the, the language model, the state language model that is available. Uh, for English, we use BERT base and for, for Portuguese, we use this uh, BERT and BAL model. Uh, both of them, uh, we use the pre-training models, and after that, we also use BERT as regression algorithm in this second uh, approach. And for both approaches, the outcome would be a score between 0 to 1, it's the same as we, what we have in the data set. Uh, in terms of uh, evaluation of our approach, we use five-fold. Uh, cross-validation, we use only five-fold because of uh, some technical uh, technical issues that we had. The BERT models are very large, so to do this cross-validation with uh, several iterations, it's tricky because we would need to have a, a equipment with uh, more, more sophisticated than what we have, so we decided to go for five-folders. Uh, as we are using regressors, we have this uh, uh, traditional measure in terms of performance of regressors, and we use uh, SHAP method to uh, provide the explainability of our model. So going to the results for the first research question, we evaluated all of these uh, algorithms for regression. These algorithms were evaluated uh, with the first set of features. So we got that uh, features based on Cometrics, on Lewick, and so on. And we applied to all of these regressors. And as we can see, for both languages, the, the two best regressors model were uh, CatBoost and Bayesian Bridge. And as I, I told you before, uh, the correlation, the Christian correlation for the English uh, data set is bigger. And it's because of the distribution of the data that we have uh, in our analysis. But both of them re uh, reached very good like uh, scores for the error, as you can see. And we also have results for the BERT analysis. And at the end, we reached better results when we were using BERT. Let me just come back. So for Portuguese, the best results using the traditional classifiers were 0.53 and for English, 0.77. In terms of BERT, we reached 0.67 and 0.80. Uh, in terms of uh, Grissom correlation. So, so the, the results improved when we used BERT and we evaluated till 20 epochs because, also because of uh, the, the technical uh, issues. 
analyze it. And to answer the second research questions, we have basically two visualizations. I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I think you cannot read it. It's very small. I can share the, the slides after, but I would like to highlight a, a, a few things. Uh, this is the visualization of the average importance of each feature that we analyzed. And the first features in both cases, although they are different, both of them measure somehow the number of words in the text. And I can show the, the number of words in the data set and you will see that it, it goes up for uh, higher grades. And it, it, it's a very shallow feature, but it's uh, very predictive in this case. We also show that Cometrics has a huge importance in this problem. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it can be uh, aligned with the previous papers where the, the many authors use Cometrics to this specific task. Also, Lewick was uh, very predictive, but as you can see, Lewick was more important for English, and our hypothesis is because the Lewick version of Portuguese is just a translation from the English to Portuguese, so it's a direct translation. We, we, we haven't done the same methodology in Portuguese, we are just using a resource that was translated. So this is the average uh, results in terms of feature importance. But we also have this visualization, uh, which I think is quite cool because for each, so this, these are two examples of essays, one in Portuguese and the other one in English. And it's possible to see for each essay what were the features that increased the, the score and what were the features that decreased the score until the end. So we can see here, okay, we can see here that, that these features in red, they were like increasing the final score of the model, while the features in blue were decreasing the, the final score. So you can see what happened with each text. So you don't know, but those, it's possible to see the average, which I presented previously, but it's also possible to see how it works for each text. And these are the, for the feature-based model, but for BERT, we also used uh, explainability to, to show what we have. And I think it will be easier for you to look into the, the second example, which is in English. The first one is in Portuguese. But basically, the words highlighted in green, they are counting for increase the score, while the words highlighted in red, they are counting to decrease the score. And at the end, we also can see, in this visualization, we can see the true grade and the predicted grade. And it's supposed to be 0 0.25, and at the end it was 0 0.43. And it's the same for Portuguese, but uh, in this case, for Portuguese, is uh, green for increase the score, red to decrease, and also the true grade and the predicted grade by the model. So the teacher can get a sense. It's hard to have a, a measure to show the, the average of uh, this BERT model because we are considering the words. So at the end, we will have a list of words, which is hard to interpret in terms of cohesion. So uh, we, we, we showed essay by essay in this case and which words were like predictively, po positively or negatively the, the score. And just to finish, uh, going back to the bigger project that I was mentioned, so our outcome at the end is to have some visualizations like this. So we have, for this national project that we have, we have several cycles of uh, essay, like the essay applications with the students. And we did a very quick analysis <laughs> of the first and the second cycle that happened uh, last year. And we can see how uh, the students were improve, improving and uh, the overall score, but also uh, for each specific competence. And we also can do this for different groups. So in this case, we have the general line, which is the blue one, 
but we are also <laughs> analyzing uh, schools in rural, rural area and we are analyzing schools in the urban area as well. So at the end, our goal is to try to help the Minister of Education on uh, to decide where to like send fundings for it specifically. I, I forgot to mention that this specific project is is only for public schools in Brazil, and we already uh, have around one million uh, essays collected from students. And yeah, this is a still uh, uh, working. Uh, we are still working on this project, so I'm happy to chat more about it with you. And if you are willing to collaborate in this topic, we are, we are very happy to have more people on board. And yeah, with this, I finish my talk. And that's it.